hello guys this is code and code and today we are going to have a look at the second lecture of the square root composition series and in this lecture we are going to talk about Mohs algorithm so what is Mohs algorithm so Mohs algorithm basically is a square root composition and queries and Mohs algorithm is used to answer the queries and uh, it works with offline queries and will ha uh, have look at what kind of offline queries does it work upon and at last it can be used to solve the questions like uh, find number of unique integers in a given range in square root of n time uh, square root of n time is for single query so if there are q queries then the overall time complexity would be q into square root of n time so let's talk about the same problem given a range and find the number of unique elements in the given range then <coughs> sorry what would be the naive approach of solving the problem so suppose the given range is 3 to 7 so in the range 3 to 7 we have to find number of unique elements so suppose this is a set and since we have to find unique elements so it makes sense to use set and each time just insert the element and at last just print the size of the set so we started at position 3 and uh, inserted 4 into the set and then 1 5 again 1 but inserting again 1 in the set would have no effect on it because it already contains 1 and a set in C++ or in any programming language I guess but generally a set does not contain uh, uh, multiple elements it, so inserting one again would have no effect on it now four so now we have covered the range from four three to seven now after traversing three to seven and inserting all the elements in the set we can print the size of the set that is three so in the range three to seven there are three unique elements as we can see one four and five are the only three unique elements now suppose uh, a new query comes in that is from 3 to 8 now the naive approach would be to start from 3 and go till 8 again by deleting the whole set and starting from 3 and going till 8 again but smart approach is to just extend your already uh, available answer to to the right so we already had the we already had the range from 3 to 7 we all we had to do is extend our right pointer so we extended it and added 3 to our set now the result of this query can be answered quickly if we just extend our answer from the previous result so observation one is that Mohs algorithm keeps the answer of the previous query and then only extend or reduces the range of the previous query accordingly to answer the next query this is the first observation let's see what the second observation is the second observation is that uh, is it always optimal to answer the query in, in a given order or not uh, if we of course the answer is not but let's see why uh, if we know that to answer the ith query we use the range already the, the answer already available in the i minus 1th query that is we use the answer of the previous query and all, all we do is extend or reduce the range of previous answer to answer the next query so let's start uh, answering the this query to answer the first query uh, our range extends from 4 to 8 the uh, we have added all the elements of it into the set and the result is 4 now the complexity of the algorithm completely depends upon the movement of these two heads uh, you have to see uh, if in, in algorithm the left and the right pointers move less it would be better of course uh, so we have to somehow make sure that the movement of the pointer is minimized so uh, if we answer the queries in a given order to answer the next query I have to move the left pointer all the way to the first position and now after, after answering that query to answer the third query I have to move the left pointer which was moved in the second query to the first position now I have to move that pointer to the seventh position so you can see the head movement is quite large 
but what we can do is we can assign them index so that we can identify which query was uh, at what index after giving the first query first index second query second and third uh, third query the third index we can actually sort them in such a way that we can somehow minimize the head movements so i have arranged them in the increasing order of their l pointer so the l pointer only increases it, it doesn't go back in the previous example we see that the uh, the left pointer was going from position 4 to 1 and then 1 to 7 again it was going back and then forth but in this uh, arrangement now the left pointer would not go back anyway uh, it would only move towards the right position it would not track back any element so if you answer the first query I have added both the elements into the set and since the index of uh, this query is 2 so the answer of this would be placed in the answer array at, at position 2 so we have answered this query now to answer the next query the left pointer have to be moved at the fourth position and the right pointer have to be moved, uh, moved at the eighth position so let's move the right pointer first so now extend now 4 would be added into the set now again extend 1 would be added into the set now again extend 5 is added into the set again extend again again now the right pointer points to the 8th index now L pointer have to move at the 4th uh, position now currently L pointer is pointed at the 1st position so uh, previously when we were extending our range of course we have to add the element into the result now when we are removing the element uh, that is we are uh, reducing our range as we can see we are currently pointing to the first the left pointer is pointing to the first position while it have to point to the fourth position to answer the second query so now we have to move the left pointer toward the right and have to remove the elements now we have removed the first uh, the first element to remove that we have to remove it from the set as well since uh, the there was only one appearance of two in the answer hence we have to remove it from here now uh, since we are at position two and we have to go to four we have to remove three as well to move our pointer towards right so we have removed it from set the answer is no because uh, before removing it we have to see whether uh in the answer array the frequency of one has become zero or not sorry frequency of three has become zero or not after removing this the frequency of three has not become zero because there is there still exists uh instance of three in in our range so we would not remove it from set uh don't worry we will we would keep a frequency array to keep track of the element which is which have to be removed from set or not when the frequency of element becomes zero then only we have to remove it from the set now frequency of 3 still is 1 in the given uh, in our uh, range now we have to remove 4 as well but since a frequency of 4 is still 1 in our range so we would not remove it from from the set now we are pointing from 4 to 8 so the answer of this is 4 which we would insert at the first position in the answer array because the set size is 4 so at, in the answer array at position 1 this query was the first query so at position 1 we insert the size of the current array now to answer the third query the left pointer have to move at the 7th position and the right pointer have to move at the 10th position so we extend our range again and again now uh, the left pointer have to move to the 7th position so move it move it and remove 5 uh, because there was only one instance of 5 and after removing it in, in the in the range the frequency of 5 becomes 0 so we have to remove it from set now again and then since uh, we have to remove this element as well sorry uh, we don't have to remove it because we are already at the 7th position so L points to 7 index and R points to the 10th index so this contains the answer so at index 3 in the answer array we would insert the size of this set that is 3 so at last we would just print the answer array so answer of the first query is 4 second query is 2 and third query is 3 so uh, you see the pointer 
movement the head movement was less in uh, uh, if we are answering the query in this manner uh, as compared to the previous one so is this optimal way to sort the queries one thing is clear that we have to in some cases we have to manipulate the the order of the queries so that we can minimize the head movement this is the second observation that we have to sort the queries in such a way that uh, that minimizes our head movement but is this an optimal way to sort the queries just considering l the answer is no so the the sorting in mo's algorithm happens like this uh, the elements are sorted in the following ways first we sort the queries in order of the block number of l uh, if you do not know what is the block number uh, please go check out the previous video where, where we were talking about when we have already talked about the block size in square root decomposition if there are if there are n elements in an array then square root n is actually uh, the block size and it <clears throat> first of all we would sort the queries in ascending order of the block number of l we and then if the queries which lie in the same l block if if the queries lie in the same block if we check the l block or basically in in case of any tie we would break the tie using the r so if two queries do not lie in the same block according to l then we would sort the queries based on their block number otherwise if they lie in the same block then we would sort the queries according to the ascending uh, order of r so this would be the sorting uh, i have already defined the block size to be 700 it is uh, you can uh, you don't have to calculate block size again and again if the if the number of elements are 10 to the power 6 then you can directly take block size as one uh, one thousand directly define it one thousand as constant and use use it throughout the problem no matter whether whether the input is hundred or ten to the power six if the just take the maximum number of element and just define it as constant block size so I have defined the constant block uh, block size and this is a co comparator of uh, function which is used in C plus plus to sort the elements. It is passed uh, as the third argument in the sort function in C++. And uh, you can use comparable class or comparator class, something like that, in Java to do the same. Uh, query A and Query B. These are two queries. Qu query is a structure. So A and B are instances of that structure. And A and B contain three elements, L, R, and I, as we have already seen in the previous example. So if A dot L divided by blk that is block so it gives the block number of starting position of query a so if the a and b do not lie in the same block according to l then we are sorting them by block number otherwise we are sorting them by uh, the ascending order of r so this is how the sorting of uh, of mo's algorithm works so there are two observation first we we use uh, to answer the i plus 1th query we use the answer calculated in ith query and before starting the answer all we do is we is we just store all the queries uh, in a structure or array and then sort the queries such that the head movements can be minimized so in this uh, lecture all we had seen are two important observation of mo's algorithm and in the third uh, uh, in the third lecture we would solve the problem dquery from spodge and we would look at the implementation of the very first most algorithm question of this lecture so thank you guys for watching and if you think that this was helpful for you please just donate if you can uh, it would help me to do better thank you guys and keep learning